Throughout history, unidentified flying objects have captivated the imagination of millions, leaving us questioning the existence of extraterrestrial life. But what if the governments of the world have been actively suppressing evidence of these encounters? In this video, we're going to be examining the unexplained, we're going to challenge conventional narratives, we're going to uncover the truth behind these extraordinary sightings, and gosh darn it, I think we're going to have a little fun too. Brace yourself for a mind bending journey into the secret realm of unidentified aerial phenomena. I'm Taylor, your casual crypt keeper, and this is the top five UFO footage that governments wanted suppressed. You let me know down below, how long is it until we're going to get that full disclosure report? Do you think it's coming in the next couple days, weeks, years? When is it? You let me know down below. Number five, Las Vegas. I think anybody watching these videos are pretty curious about UFOs, and we'd all want to see a UFO up close and personal, yeah? Well, what if you had one crash in your backyard? For this Las Vegas family, they might have had a close encounter right on their doorstep. No contact UFO curbside delivery. A 911 call about non human beings caught the attention of local police. When on April 30th, around midnight, a police officer's body cam recorded something streaking across the sky. This event was corroborated across California, Nevada, and Utah, according to the American Meteor Society, who probably answers the phone a lot about possible UFOs. And whatever it was that landed in this family's backyard, drone video showed a circular imprint in the dirt. When the family called, they claimed that there was an eight foot person outside the craft and another inside it, with big eyes and looking at them. The caller described them as being eight to 10 feet tall, looking like aliens with big eyes and a big mouth. Described them as being shiny and 100% not human. Now this wasn't just one random crazy caller as the whole family living there said they saw the same thing. The caller said that they saw a shooting star and now there's something in the backyard. The officer responding said he saw something fall out of the sky too, which is why he was so curious about it. Representatives from Nellis Air Force Base said they weren't involved with this incident at all and suggested contacting the police. Interestingly though, a spokesperson for the Pentagon didn't comment at all in regards to this event. And isn't that interesting? And if you're looking for way more footage about UFOs, well hey, you already know Top 5 Scary is the place to be and then some. We got more UFOs than you could ever watch in a lifetime. So click subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell so you don't miss any of our scary videos from us. But do that at the end of this video, okay? Because I got four more pieces of UFO footage and evidence coming up for you right now. Number four, Indonesia. Now here is an absolutely wild story for you. A marine veteran is breaking a 14 year silence claiming now that he and his squad mates saw a UFO while they were deployed in Indonesia in 2009 and were threatened into silence over it. Michael Herrera was a 20 year old rifleman sent on a Navy humanitarian mission during the 2009 Sumatra earthquake and the tsunami that would devastate the region. He claims that his unit was guarding a supply drop outside the city of Padang and his six man unit stumbled on something they were never meant to see, an octagonal unknown aerial craft that seemed to be being used by some sort of clandestine government force. The Marine has an unmarked four year service record and showed text with a fellow witness who refused to speak out about this incident, worrying that discussing this incident would jeopardize his life. Herrera claimed that while guarding supplies from insurgents, they had weapons drawn on them by unmarked forces who had American accents, who told them off and demanded to know who they were. These unknown soldiers took the weapons from the Marines and took their IDs and began loading ammunition, large weapon cases, and other things from modified Ford F-350s onto a platform beneath a large octagonal craft, which would rise off the ground and shoot away at an incredible speed of up to 4,000 miles per hour. Now for 14 years, Harara did not say a word on this incident. It wasn't until the recent wave of UFO sightings and discussions that he felt like it was finally time to come forward about this event. Now it doesn't really sound like a Marine to lie about something like this especially not one with an unmarked four year service record like that. So what happened? Who were those guys? Officially sanctioned by the US government? Some sort of other organization entirely? The men in black? Is it fun to wildly speculate? It is. Number three, David Grush. David Grush is a former intelligence officer, a US Air Force veteran who has had got ties to UAP and UFO development and research. And you're probably gonna be hearing this name a lot if you're interested in UFOs and all that stuff because he's been blowing the whistle on possible UFO activity inside the US, boldly claiming that not only does the American government have proof of extraterrestrial life, but that the American government is storing alien crafts for their own 
purpose, which kind of makes sense of that last story if you think about it. They might be connected. Now, last week, Grush made headlines when he claimed that the US government has concealed evidence of a non human craft from Congress. And Grush is trying to make people aware of this story. He claims that it's got an intact or partially intact craft, as well as he's got evidence of deceased agents and officers through crash site retrieval, explaining when you recover something that's landed or crashed, sometimes you encounter dead pilots and believe it or not, it's true. Quote, does that mean that they have evidence of alien bodies, deceased aliens? Now, Grush claims that personally, he never saw any non-human evidence up close and personal, but he knows enough people within the program to confide that it's real, saying he knows several intelligence officers involved in the crash site retrieval program, as well adding that there's a decades-long competition with adversaries to retrieve the materials from crash sites to reverse engineer the crafts for defense advantages. Isn't that so like humans? We got alien technology and the only thing we can do with it is build more warships. Can't do anything fun with it. Anyway, it's an incredible claim. And if this is true, it would be the story of the century. Maybe the biggest story in human history. This moment of truth that everyone is looking for and fighting for. This final proof that aliens are totally out there among us and we're working on their crafts. So is it true? <laughs> Is the truth finally coming out? All we can do is sit on our thumbs and wait and see. Number two, strange orb. I think this has been kind of a heavy video so far. You know, we've got these big claims of whistleblowers, leaks to the press, shadowy organizations, black ops mercenaries, people being silenced, retrieved crashes. We need at least one footage of something strange, a little black dot going across the sky to just lighten up the mood a little bit, you know? Plus, I really think footage of weird orbs is kind of the bread, butter, the roots of this channel, and I don't want to stray too far from my roots. This following footage that we're about to show you was captured sometime in June 2021 and remained dormant for years until being posted on the UFO subreddit, which is the most trusted source of UFO information in the human world, I think. When full disclosure happens, it's going to happen on Reddit before anywhere else. Now, this clip shows a small black spherical orb darting around the sky at that impossible to ascertain distance where you can't make out any features or anything. The object moves erratically. It doesn't seem like it's moving with the wind or being blown, but rather jerked around, like stopping completely and then going in the opposite direction, giving the impression that it's something that's being controlled. Now. Whether that means it's being controlled remotely or it's being piloted by something very, very small, I'm not sure, but it's something that's being driven, that much I think. Drones are obviously the most likely possibility, although I would say the object in this clip seems like it's moving just a little bit too fast to be a drone from this planet. We see a lot of these mysterious spheroid objects in UFO clips, and I have to wonder if they're all coming from the same source. Somebody check the manufacturer's logo on it. Now, it bears mentioning with any clip of a weird thing in the sky, very likely could just be a balloon, could also be some sort of camera glitch or artifact, and without any of the context or important key details in this video, like where it came from, who filmed it, and why, it can be hard to tell for certain just what this is. As much, not much to go on but speculating. So I'll leave it up to you in the comment section. You let me know if you think this is just circumstantial and distracting us from the truth, or if this is another piece of the puzzle. And number one, covered crafts. Of course, David Grush isn't the only person claiming the US government has impressive UFO technology hidden away. An unnamed anonymous whistleblower, probably for the best, claims that a UFO recovered by the US military is so advanced that its technology doesn't even make sense to humans at all. Claiming that this craft distorts space time. Claiming that on the inside, it's the size of a football stadium. This story was relayed from the whistleblower to lawyer Daniel Sheehan, who's a lawyer who specializes in aiding UFO whistleblowers. There really is a guy for everything, isn't there? The story goes that the US recovered a craft that was 30 feet wide and embedded in the earth. The crash site recovery crew sent an agent inside the downed craft and discovered like the TARDIS, it's much bigger on the inside, saying that he was disoriented and nauseous after stepping inside and discovering that the innards of the craft were impossibly large, the size of a football stadium while the outside was only about 30 feet wide. Now, apparently size isn't the only thing affected by the wondrous craft, with the whistleblower claiming that the agent said he was inside the UFO for a few minutes, while the rest of the unit outside claimed that he was inside for hours. Now, a story this bold would require a great weight of evidence to go with it. And 
And that's the kicker because unfortunately we don't have much of anything at all outside of an anonymous unnamed source possibly relating this to a lawyer. There's no dates, no location given, and definitely no photos or footage. So can we rack this up? Is this a believable source or is this someone trying to jump on the coattails of other whistleblowers and try to drum up a bit of attention? Are all of these stories coming out right now proof that full disclosure is coming up on us or is this just a carrot on a stick to keep us chasing forever and ever? I'm not sure, but I know the truth is out there, my ghouls and goblins. That's about all she wrote for this one. Creep on creeping on. I'll see you in the next one, okay?